The next topic that we would like to look at is the topic of linear combinations. Now, given vectors inside of uh, n-dimensional or uh, n-space, so this little symbol here means that these vectors v1 through vp belong to Rn, and some scalars c1 through cp, and because they're scalars, they belong to the real numbers. The vector that is written as c1 times the first vector plus c2 times the second vector, and so on, is called a linear combination of v1 through vp. The ci's are called the weights of our linear combination. So let me begin by giving you an example of a linear combination. I can just take any two vectors. So I'm going to take the vector a1 to be 1, 2, and 3, and I'll take my second vector to be a2, and it will be the vector 2, 4, minus 2. And I want to make a linear combination of these two vectors, and the ci's can be any number I want. So in my case, I am just going to pick 2. So 2 times the first vector, 1, 2, 3, plus 3 times the second vector, which is 2, 4, minus 2. And I'm going to multiply each of those vectors by the appropriate scalar, and then add the resulting vector together. And I will get 8, 16, and 0. So this is called a linear combination. A linear combination of my vectors a1 and a2. So I could have started with these vectors a1 and a2, and I can make an infinite number of linear combinations by just changing the weights of the particular vectors. So on the next page here, move over here, I have a, a slightly different question. So in this question, I'm kind of doing the reverse. I have two vectors. A1, A1 is 6 minus 1, and the vector A2 is the vector 3, 4, and I have one other vector, minus 3, 11. And the question is, I want to write B as a linear combination of the A1 and A2. So if I just go back to the definition for a second, what I'm given here is the two vectors, and I'm given the thing that it's equal to, that's what's going to be the B, and what I'm being asked for is to find the weight. So let me just write that more explicitly so you have it in your notes, is we want to find C1 and C2, my weights, such that C1 times my first vector, 6 minus 1, plus C2 minus the second vector, it gives me the third vector, which is my vector b. So that is our goal. Now, at the beginning here, it's not even clear that you should be able to even find the c1 and c2. Now, in this particular example, I've cooked things up that we will be able to. Now, how, how should we be able to solve this? Well, on the left-hand side, we can use our properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication to rewrite it. Right? So the via vector operations, the left-hand side reduces to 6 times c1 minus 3c2, and then I have minus c1, nope, that should be fix that. Oh, that was correct, actually. Minus C1 plus 4C2. So if you were to take this side and multiply, multiply by my constant and then add it all up, I will get a vector of this form on the left-hand side, and I want it to be equal to the vector on the other hand. Okay, but if you step back and stare at this for a second, what we really have here is we get a system of linear equations. So we get a system of linear equations. Okay, what system of linear equations are we looking at? 
Well, we're getting the system of linear equations that say that 6c1 minus 3c2 is equal to minus 3. And my second equation is minus c1 plus 4c2 equals to 11. And now we know how to handle these sorts of uh, systems of linear equations. Here I'll put it into its augmented form. 6 minus 1 minus 3, 4. A little dash line here just to keep track of the fact that we're using an augmented matrix. There we go, minus 3, 11. And you could do some row reducing and I'll do the work for you. You get 1 minus 4 minus 11. Really what I've done there is I've taken the bottom row and I moved it to the top because I already have a 1 here and I multiplied it by minus 1. And then I want to kill the 6. And after I do that, I would have 0, 21, and 63. And you could do a little bit further, but if you stare at it in this case, what we get is that C2 has to be 3, because 21 times 3 is 63, and C1 would have to be equal to 1. And you could get that from maybe going back to equation 2 here. I plug in 3, so minus C1 plus 12 is 11, so that would mean that C1 is 1. Okay, so we do actually have that B is a linear combination. All right, so let's write that out so it's in your notes. 3 times, oops, I got the, uh, got the C in the wrong spot. So 1 times the vector 6 minus 1 plus 3 times the second vector minus 3, 4 is equal to the vector 3, 11. Okay. So what we're going to the next page here, kind of summarizing kind of what we're seeing in this particular example is if you have a particular vector equation, Right? So we talked about a linear combination. This looks like a linear combination, but this vector equation now has all the weights or unknowns, x1, x2, x n, n, and you want to set it equal to b. So this equation has the same solution set as the linear system with this augmented matrix, where you're, you're into columns a1 through a n, you're putting your vectors a1 through a n, and in the last column, you're setting it what it's equal to. So Going back here, we've just basically learned a new term. We've learned a new term, a linear combination. I'll go back a little further. We've learned about a linear combination. And if you're asking to solve, find weights to solve a linear combination, what you're really doing is you're just setting up a matrix equation and solving it, which is something that we've seen a number of times already in this course. Here we will pause and in the next part we will look at a spanning set.